assalamu alaikum students welcome back and uh, now we are going to have our next lecture about work based learning but before starting new lecture and discussing new concepts and theories about learning let's recap first the things that we have covered in our previous classes so students uh, looking at the recap just uh, recall the things that you have uh, covered in previous classes i mean what work based learning is work based learning is combination of work as well as the learning that you had in the uh, from your universities or uh, maybe from your uh, going through the secondary literature that is available so bringing up all that knowledge to the workplaces and practically implementing it for effective uh, organizational operations so it is work based learning and then we have uh, uh, differentiated bifurcated work from learning so work is basically looking into the things doing activities performing at uh, workplaces where you are where you are supposed to work so uh, work is basically generally done for the sake of acquisition for the sake of uh, getting some benefit and definitely we generally try to prefer the benefit in terms of cash in terms of finances so when we get some financial return in the um, as a result of performing some uh providing some services to the organization so we say that we are doing some work so generally we mean work by or we define work by uh in terms of paid work students work okay kya hum usko bhi work keh sakte hain jo ke without pay log kar rahe hain like hamari housewives hain housewives are doing are busy doing different types of activities throughout day throughout i mean from day till night to aisa hai ki student for the time being for this organizational study for um, uh, for the purpose of this management course we do not consider those ladies who are performing without having without getting any financial benefit so later on we have discussed how learning takes place and there was a circle there was a cycle that helped us to understand how learning can take place there were two things that were discussed in that cycle that was about you don't know what you don't know and you don't know what you know and then i mean later on crossing stage after a stage we came to uh, the last stage of the cycle okay students uh after that we have discussed uh, one of the uh renowned research of one of the renowned uh, american educationist and educational theorist named as cobb cobb has provided us with a cycle with a circle uh which included different activities and we learned that first of all generally we start with doing or experimenting the things or getting the feel for the first time and then we indulge in looking for more information we start thinking about it we may go through uh, or we may consult more people about uh, that very experience that we had and then later on uh, going into more depth lead us to become theorists theorists are the people who consult uh who can tell the theory the books available the theories that are present uh, present in the forms of research papers and so on and at the end of the day when you prefer when you become confident and when you try to adopt certain way of action after going through after getting uh, handsome amount of knowledge after getting hand, handsome amount of uh, uh, handsome amount of um, uh, information for adopting certain ways so you become pragmatist and pragmatist are the people who are really experts and who choose uh, to do the things on the basis of uh, some concrete concrete um, i mean uh, information that they had that they have gathered and after gathering that information they analyze and they decide about the uh, things to be done so students 
keeping all this uh, learning and work based learning and especially the cobs learning cycle in view uh, let's share an exercise based on cobs learning cycle just to recall and just to involve you people actively in the process of this uh, learning so can you recall cobs learning cycle and uh, can you answer me um, these questions that I'm going to share with you people in the upcoming slide. So here is the upcoming slide and uh, just go through the slide and try to think and uh, answer me about the questions that have been asked over here. Okay, well, you are well familiar with the Cobb's learning cycle. So just to understand the concept, I mean, if there is, suppose I'm mean, taking an example, which I'm going to read it from the slide. It says that, suppose there is an example, a new piece of software arrives in the office or in your home. Uh, how do you go about learning about it? So since it is a new experience about learning about a new software, so what will be your response to it? In the, on the basis of that response, on the basis of the way you adopt to learn uh, the new software that has been arrived uh, recently in your office or in your home, we will try to bifurcate uh, from which category as per Cobb's learning cycle you belong to. So starting with the first uh, option or the first question, it says that uh, do you install it and start trying it out? I mean for the first time when you receive that software so what will you do either you will just get it get hold of the CD or get hold of the software get it installed in your computer and automatically on the basis of hit and trial on the basis of experimentation for the sake of getting the feel for the sake of looking into it for the first time will you just install it and uh, start doing your work yeah Oh, exactly, right. If you do like this, so you belong to activists. So you are in the, you fall in the category of activists. So this is one of the characteristics of activists that without prior knowledge, without consulting anyone else, without reading the theory that is present about usage of that software, uh, you just, uh, by adopting hit and trial method, by adopting experimentation method, you by yourself uh, start using that software. So if you do like this, you become an activist. Okay, okay. at times this is uh, one part of uh, activity or this is one part of learning. So this may lead to some problems. This may lead to smooth sailing of the, uh, smooth running of the, um, software that you are using so students on the second stage if you go into depth and you inquire about the things and you consult the opinion of people and you uh, try to acquire more knowledge about the software that you had so I mean let's look at the second question so uh, the people among you who have opted for yes and they do like the same as we have done in uh, question number one so you will be activists so who are reflectors reflectors are I mean the people suppose uh, I'm going to ask question from the people do you watch as others show you how to use it either you consult someone else who has already used it or who, uh, who is involved in using the software or who knows about that software uh, if you consult that pe person or try to gain more knowledge about, try to gain more information about uh, that software, so you will be a reflector. You express yourself, your feeling, your experience, first, ex first encounter, first interaction with the software, so you become reflector now. Okay, there is another question that states that, do you learn about the background of it, background to it, and the similarities with other uh, programs agar aap compare and co contrast shuru kar do agar aap ye dekhna chaho match and mismatch shuru kar do ke ye software jo pehle softwares the jo pehle programs the unhi ki tarah hai aur jo unka installation ka tarika ekar tha wohi 
इस सॉफ्टवेयर के इंस्टॉलेशन का तरीका कार है जिस तरह से उसको एग्जीक्यूट किया जाता था उसी तरह से इसको एग्जीक्यूट किया जाता है जिस तरह से उसका यूजेज था उससे मुख्तलिफ इसका यूजेज है द पर्पज इज डिफरेंट द वेज ऑफ ऑपरेशन इज सेम सो नाउ यू हैव स्टार्टेड कंपेयरिंग एंड कंट्रास्टिंग दिस सॉफ्टवेयर विद द सॉफ्टवेयर दैट यू हैव यूज अलियर प्लस इन एडिशन यू स्टार्टेड कंसल्टिंग और रीडिंग द बुक्स और द रीडिंग मैनुअल दैट वॉज अवेलेबल फॉर दैट फॉर दैट सॉफ्टवेयर प्लस यूजर मैनुअल को देखा यूजर मैनुअल के बाद के अलावा आपने उसके यूजेज के बेनिफिट्स देखे ये सारी चीज़ें करने के बाद अगर आपने उसको अप्लाई किया अगर आपने उसको कंपेयर एंड कंट्रास्ट किया चीज़ों को इवेलुएट करने की कोशिश की तो यू बिकेम थ्योरिस्ट एंड एट द लास्ट स्टेज विच इज अबाउट द प्रेगमेटिस्ट प्रेगमेटिस्ट कौन लोग होते हैं प्रेगमेटिस्ट आर द पीपल सपोज इफ आई आस्क पीपल इफ आई आस्क स्टूडेंट्स अ क्वेश्चन लाइक डू यू नॉट बादर एक्सप्लोरिंग अंटिल सपोज इफ आई आस्क यू पीपल अ क्वेश्चन लाइक डू यू डू यू नॉट बॉदर एक्सपेरिमेंटिंग अंटिल यू फाइंड अ क्लियर पर्पज ऑफ इट so you are pragmatist <laughs> kehne ka matlab ye ke first you have to find out the purpose of usage and the benefits that software has for you to jab aap compare and contrast kar lete hain jab aap ultimately benefits ki buniyad pe faisla karte hain ki ji is there any applicability is there any benefit is there any relation of this software to my working so you become pragmatist so i'm keeping in view all these four questions if you answered first as yes so you were active activist if you answered second one as yes you became reflector if you uh, if your answer was yes for the third question so you became theorist and if your answer for the fourth question was yes so you became the pragmatist so in this very manner we can bifurcate the people on the basis of cobbs learning cycle and generally uh, most of the people among us try to learn by crossing all these four stages okay students uh now work based learning how work based learning takes place and why generally we prefer to learn so it says that it is a learning that takes place to work for work and from work so why we are supposed to learn we are supposed to learn for three good reasons that is first one is to work yes since we are looking ahead since we are expecting ourselves to join some organization suppose if a person taking uh, finance education or taking finance as specialization he may be looking for a uh, bank and he may be looking for job opening in a bank and he may be searching for a job to join some bank or maybe any of the financial institutions a person who is specializing in human resource management may be looking for any organization uh, having demand for hr assistant hr manager a person uh, specializing in marketing since it is a pre pre stage of uh, joining the job so a, mar a person who is uh, special getting specialized in the marketing field so uh, that person is uh, looking that person might be looking for some job that is relevant to the marketing subject so first of all since this is a pre stage you haven't joined any type of job but you are expecting to have some job so you learn you acquire knowledge you gather relevant information you gather information uh, you saw uh, try to get relevant knowledge on the basis of um, expected job that you are going to have so first one why we learn because of we want to work in coming future so this is basically knowledge acquisition we try to acquire relevant knowledge we try to acquire no, uh, relevant uh, skills and try to develop relevant uh, attitudes on the sec uh, next stage uh, we learn for work for work we mean uh, that uh, knowledge sharing with others 
that is about the people who are doing the similar jobs uh, and we try to share our thoughts about the specialization about the courses about the um, things about the knowledge that we have uh, sought in our education system from our universities from our colleges and we try to relate and we try to ask these people who are already working in the organizations in different organizations about what is that field about will it be beneficial for me to join so and so organization when you um, share your thoughts about particular field of knowledge about particular job what you are doing basically you are gaining their opinion you are taking their opinion to gain relevant knowledge relevant opinion about for the job that you are going to join maybe third stage is about for a job definitely when you have acquired some knowledge when you have acquired opinion from people and ultimately you are looking for some relevant job and uh, you happen to get relevant job so you um, i mean without uh, without having prior knowledge without having prior skills without having prior um uh, expertise in terms of uh, knowledge acquisition you may not be able to work you may not be able to do the job that you are supposed to suppose you have been hired as human resource manager in a firm in a bank suppose for that matter and you are supposed to and you have been assigned a task to uh select the people or you have been assigned a task to recruit people or you have been assigned full hr department and you have been hired as hr assistant and you are responsible for looking at all the hr related activities so if you don't have the prior knowledge so if you don't have the prior uh, opinion about the uh, work you may not be able to perform it successfully you have to know what basically the difference is between recruitment how uh, recruitment and selection how recruitment can be done what are possible ways of recruiting people what are possible ways of selecting people and so on and so forth you should be able to um, have the capacity as well as the skills related to interviewing the relevant people so uh in this very manner when you when we say that learning is uh, work based learning is preferred why work based learning is preferred because generally the people learn to work for work and from work okay from work when it comes to from work from work is practically actually joining the organization and making uh, and adopting the uh, uh, experiencing or pr practically applying that knowledge prior knowledge that you have got in your university to um, uh, i mean when you implement that uh, knowledge uh, in the organization in the work setting so this is something from work from work ki example hum log kuch is tarah se bhi le sakte hain ke जब हम प्रैक्टिकली रिक्रूट कर रहे हों किसी एक को सपोज वन ऑफ द फंक्शंस ऑफ ह्यूमन रिसोर्स मैनेजर तो वी मे एक्सपीरियंस डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ डिफिकल्टीज डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स व्हेन आर व्हेन वी आर डीलिंग विद व्हेन वी हैव टू व्हेन वी आर सपोज टू रिक्रूट सम सेंस वी हैव टू प्रोवाइड इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट द जॉब वी हैव टू राइट जॉब डिस्क्रिप्शन इफ देर इज एनी डिस्क्रिपेंसी इफ देर इज सम वर्ड रॉन्गली यूज फॉर आई मीन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द जॉब सो इट मे कम्युनिकेट रॉन्गली रॉन्ग मीनिंग टू द कैंडिडेट्स एंड सपोज एक एग्जाम्पल लेते हैं एक बंदा एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में गया और he was assigned a task to give an ad for employment fine to usne uh, ad diya students aur us ad mein usse jo galti sarzad hui wo ye hui ke usne ye mention kahi nahi kiya ke either this job is for male candidates or female candidates which basically he was supposed to write ke ji aya i am going to hire these people having such and such qualification who are supposed to do such and such uh, functions in this organization and definitely the nature of job was such which was only for males not for females so it is the responsibility it is the it was the 
co-responsibility of that person, that HR assistant, to provide the proper knowledge. So, कहने का मतलब ये कि अब इस एक गलती से उसके लिए सीखने के बहुत सारे बहाने बन गए. कैसे हुआ? Because जब वो ये ad दे चुका और लोग interview के दिन interview देने आ रहे थे, तो उसमें males भी थे और females भी. Or he was bit confused when he saw females for coming up for an interview. तो जब females को उसने देखा और interview देने के लिए females भी आ रही हैं, males भी आ रहे हैं, तो he said कि no, this ad was not for females. Females got angry and there was a situation of conflict between those females and the person who was responsible for giving an ad. तो स्टूडेंट्स देखें यहाँ पे जब आप सीख के आते हो और इम्प्लीमेंट करते हो तो देखो एट टाइम्स आपकी जो वर्क सिचुएशन होती है वर्क सेटिंग्स जो होती हैं वो भी आपको बहुत कुछ सिखा देती हैं ठीक है तो देखें पहले शायद उसने कहीं भी बुक्स में ये चूंकि उसको एक्सपीरियंस नहीं हुआ था शायद किसी ने रिपोर्ट ना किया हो शायद इसके पढ़ने में कहीं कमी रह गई हो इसकी लर्निंग में कहीं कमी रह गई हो इसने उस चीज़ को टच ना किया हो कि कैसे ऐड दिया जाता है लिहाजा जब उसने ऐड दिया और इन रिस्पॉन्स टू दैट एड वन ही एक्सपीरियंसड रियली आ हार्श कॉन्फ्लिक्ट with females so he learned that no for the next time i have to clarify or clearly write which gender is required either i'm looking for male employees or for female or both so students in this very manner we learn we learn from formal settings and we bring that knowledge to the work settings and we uh, learn to work we learn for work and we learn from work as well fine फॉर्म वर्क की एग्जाम्पल्स और भी बहुत सारी डिस्कस की जा सकती हैं बेस्ड ऑन द नॉलेज दैट वी हैव सपोज आपने कार लोन देने का तरीका या एल सी किसी भी बैंक में लेटर ऑफ क्रेडिट जिसको कहते हैं एल सी ओपनिंग का तरीका तो आपने पढ़ा था बट वैन यू एक्चुअली परफॉर्म डेट अपॉन ज्वाइनिंग सम बैंक वैन यू ओपन एन एल सी सो यू केम टू नो के वट आर द रियल डिफिकल्टीज इन ओपनिंग दैट एल सी वट आर द रिक्वायरमेंट्स टू ओपन दैट एल सी सो उसमें बहुत सारी लेटर ऑफ क्रेडिट के हवाले से जो टर्म्स थी शायद आपने पढ़ी हुई थी लेकिन यू आर नॉट रियली क्लियर अबाउट द मीनिंग्स ऑफ दोज टर्म्स यू आर नॉट रियली अवेयर ऑफ द प्रैक्टिस दैट बैंक जनरली अडोप्ट फॉर ओपनिंग एन एल सी एंड रनिंग दैट एल सी फॉर मेचोरिटी सो स्टूडेंट्स this is how uh, i mean learning helps us to work for work and from work so we may say that learning is a continuous process and uh, it is um, uh, it gives us something in terms of experience in terms of sharing new things in terms of coming up with the changing situations and dealing with the people in changing situations Okay, students. Now we are going to look at few of the basic theories of uh, learning that helps us to understand how learning uh, takes place and why learning is important. First of all, the theories that are based on behaviorism, which is basically to control the behavior of employees within the organizations, maybe controlling the behavior of students when uh, students are learning in the organizations. Uh, taking care of or um, managing the behavior of um, uh, students or the trainees when they are undergoing certain training and so on. Uh, on the other hand, there is another set of um, theorists who, have, uh, who are of the opinion or who have developed cognitivism. Cognitivism, I mean, this is a set of theories which pertain to, uh, which pertain to basically uh, the learning and the processes that are involved in learning, cognition से है, remember से है, brain से relate करता है, mind से relate relate करता है, कि human being, being a human being, we have to adopt certain things, we have to acquire certain things, we have to take the information, we are supposed to store the information and when required, we are supposed to recall the information. Uh, okay, and the third uh, group of people and the third set of theories, theorists, 
are of the view that learning is not only about controlling the behavior. Learning is not only about storing and uh, retrieval of the information, but it is about by learning by observing, learning by looking at the people around us, learning uh, different skills, learning different behaviors, learning different um, uh, maybe uh, uh, different things from different people. I mean, the people around us may be our boss, the people around us may be our colleague, our friend, our co worker, our, our subordinate, maybe someone outside the organization, maybe someone inside the organization. It is also known as role uh, learning from role models. So we try to learn from models as well. So starting with the behaviorism, how behaviorism is related to work-based learning and how, what is the contribution of the theories that are related to um, behaviorism, controlling the behavior of uh, individuals. So it says that majorly two theories that come in front of us with respect to controlling the behavior of the um, individuals uh, with respect to learning. Uh, one is known as classical conditioning theory and other one is known as operant conditioning theory. Classical conditioning theory is also known as uh, stimulus response theory, just call SR theory. Uh, as per Pavlov, he is of the view that whenever there is some stimulus, in return there is some response. Achha, hum human beings hai. हम जब कभी लर्न करते हैं, हम जब कभी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में, वर्क सेटिंग्स में जाके परफॉर्म करने की कोशिश करते हैं, तो दो तरीके से हम तोर पे या दो वजूहात की बिना पे हम कुछ लर्निंग करना चाहते हैं, कुछ अपने बिहेवियर को चेंज करना चाहते हैं। एक तो कुछ सेट ऑफ फैक्टर्स हैं जो के पहले हम पे इफेक्ट करते हैं at the time uh, in the in the in the manner of stimulus stimulus ki surat mein hamare upar act upon karte hain aur in response we respond to those uh, stimuli and we respond accordingly fine kehne ka matlab ye pehle koi uh, stimulus act upon hota hai aur uske against hum koi action lete hain theek hai suppose ji maar padi maar padi kiske liye padi ji padhte nahi the lihaza padhna shuru kar diya पहले मार पड़ी, फिर पढ़ना शुरू कर दिया। पहले जॉब ना मिली, so to acquire the job you started you started learning। क्योंकि पहले जॉब नहीं मिली, लिहाजा you started studying and clarifying the concepts, so stimulus response, ठीक है जी? Pavlov ने जो एक्सपेरिमेंट किया था, that was based on some animal और एनिमल का रिस्पांस उसने रिकॉर्ड किया था, that we are going to discuss shortly in detail. And uh, on the other hand, operant conditioning. Operant conditioning may be hum respond karte hain, hum behave karte hain in a certain manner, but keeping in view the results, but keeping in view the consequences. Suppose ji, promotion honi hai meri, mein promotion chahta hun, so for promotion I will work hard, job acquire karni hai mujhe, job acquire karni hai to I will work hard, I will try to grab the highest grades while studying and so on and so forth. So, pehli case mein classical conditioning ki surat mein, stimulus response theory ki surat mein, humare oopar kuch antecedents te jiske against hum response de rahe te, jabke operant conditioning mein kuch consequences hain jinko dekh ke hum kisi ek specific kism ka behavior adopt karte hain. I hope students this is clear, this is the major difference between classical conditioning and uh, operant conditioning. So this is totally relevant to our subject of this work based learning and uh, particularly to the learning. So students uh, now look at uh, these two theories are also known as associative learning. Why associative learning? Because the outcome or the behavior. Outcome or behavior is one and the same thing. Behavior is related to the some sort of either consequences in terms of operant conditioning or the stimulus in terms of classical conditioning. So when two events are associated with each other, that is one is a stimulus and other one is response. One is uh, behavior and other one is the consequence. So it is known as associative learning. So let's um, discuss classical conditioning theory in detail uh, with the help of the Pavlov's example. 
So students, for you, I'm going to um, read the definition, the formal definition of classical conditioning uh, from the slide. It is a type of conditioning. Okay, what do we mean by conditioning? I mean, uh, we, have, uh, we have been using and we are continuously using a term conditioning, conditioning. Okay, you think over it and I, in the meantime, I go through the slides and uh, go through the definition of it and then we'll discuss what this conditioning is. A type of conditioning in which an individual responds to some stimulus that would not ordinarily produce such a response. Okay, ji. जब तक अगर आपको स्टूमुलस नहीं दिखाया गया था आप किसी किस्म का रिस्पॉन्स नहीं दे रहे थे ठीक है अब क्या है अब कोई स्टूमुलस आपको दिखाया जा रहा है आपको शो किया जा रहा है सम सॉर्ट ऑफ स्टूमुलस इज एक्टिंग अपॉन यू एंड यू आर परफॉर्मिंग यू आर बिहेविंग इन अ सर्टन मैनर टीचर स्ट्रिक्ट होता है तो आप ज्यादा रेगुलर होते हो क्लास में टीचर स्ट्रिक्ट नहीं होता तो आप क्लास में रेगुलर नहीं होते सो स्टूमुलस इज स्ट्रिक्टनेस ऑफ द टीचर एंड इन रिस्पॉन्स द बिहेवियर दैट यू अडॉप्ट इज द रेगुलरिटी फाइन ओके सो कंडीशनिंग कंडीशनिंग हम डिस्कस कर रहे थे सो वट आर यू अप टू अबाउट कंडीशनिंग कंडीशनिंग क्या चीज है चले फॉर द टाइम बींग मैं आप लोगों के लिए इसको थोड़ा सा आसान अल्फाज में अगर कह दू तो फॉर द टाइम बींग हम इसको लर्निंग का नाम दे देते हैं कि लर्निंग कैसे होती है it is due to it is in response to some stimulus when we respond to some stimulus so uh, we try to adopt certain behavior when we say that we try to adopt certain behavior this is what basically the conditioning is this is what basically the learning is so students here is the diagram uh, or here is the experiment basically conducted by pavlov pavlov was a uh, russian scientist who used to uh, tap the responses of dog upon showing two different things. Usne kya kiya tha? Usne dogs ko sikhane ke liye ek natural jo ke original ya real stimulus tha usko relate kiya ek unnatural ya neutral stimulus ke saath. Fine? To students this was the condition of his experiment before uh, conditioning or we say that before learning of the dog if we look at the first uh, half of this diagram the upper half of the diagram when food is presented when food is shown to a dog dog starts salvation UCS which is unconditioned stimulus and on the other hand Unconditioned response. आप लोगों के लिए आसान कर दूं ये unconditioned नाम तो और पे confuse करता है. What basically this unconditioned stimulus and unconditioned response is? Unconditioned uh, unconditioned uh, stimulus is the real or the actual or the uh, natural stimulus, natural thing. Right so upon seeing the food, uh, जो natural behavior वो adopt करेगा dog that was of salvation. Fine. On the other hand, in the next half, if we see, it's like neutral, an artificial stimulus liya, or associate abhi nahi kiya tha, alag se dog ko dikhaya, and he got no response. Zahir hai, bell ko dekke ya bell ko sunke, dog ka kya response ho sakta tha? Koi nahi hu, kahi ko huna bhi nahi chahiye tha, hua bhi nahi. So he said that, ke ji neutral, jo stimulus hai, neutral ke against, hume koi response nahi milta. जबकि हमें जब हम नेचुरल या रियल कोई स्टिमुलस शो करते हैं तो उसके अगेंस्ट रियल रिस्पॉन्स भी हमें मिलता है दिस वॉज द सिचुएशन बिफोर कंडीशनिंग बिफोर लर्निंग फिर क्या हुआ नेक्स्ट स्टेज में पैवलॉव ने दोनों चीजों को एक नेचुरल चीज को रियल चीज को और एक आर्टिफिशियल चीज को आपस में रिलेट करना शुरू कर दिया आपस में कंबाइन करके पेयर बना के प्रेजेंट करना शुरू कर दिया डॉग को दिस इज द नेक्स्ट स्टेज वेयर ही पेयर द न्यूट्रल थिंग विद अनकंडीशनड स्टिमुलस व्हिच वाज द एक्चुअल या रियल स्टिमुलस जब ये हुआ स्टूडेंट्स तो क्या हुआ डॉग 
started learning that whenever the bell rings, this is my food time. Or whenever I've been presented with a food, um, definitely I expect the bell to ring. Fine? Uh, not really I, but at that time I'm in the dark. Okay, fine. So uh, what was this? I mean, this paired, I mean, uh, paired with pair or pairing of this unconditioned stimulus with the neutral, with the artificial thing. And uh, this was done, this he done for, for uh, making dog learn. So this is conditioning. This is the dog learn. This is the dog food. This is the dog to bell is the dog learn. This 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 is is the dog learn. This 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 is the dog is unconditioned response. Fine. But after passage of some time in the third stage, what he did, usne jo unconditioned stimulus tha, jo real, jo actual, actual, jo natural stimulus tha, usko ghaib kar diya. Unnatural, artificial, ya neutral stimulus jo tha, wo reh gaya. Aur uske against bhi dog ne respond karna shuru kar diya. Now the dog is responding to the conditioned stimulus which is basically the neutral before so humne kya dekha ke do cheezon ko associate kar dene se dog ki learning ho gayi isi tarah se human beings bhi jab do cheeze associate hoti hain aapas mein and over a period of time human beings learn that whenever these two things come together or maybe after a period of time, when a single thing comes together, we try to relate the second, we try to expect the second one as well. Isn't it like this, students? Yeah, it is like this. So now we are going to share few, one or two examples from our daily lives or from our organizational practices that we come across about classical conditioning. So students, some kya sikha ke whenever there are two events which are paired together, one is having uh, natural uh, nature and second one is having artificial nature. But over a period of time, human beings learn. Over a period of time, students learn. Over a period of time, managers learn how to respond to the uh, paired paired one. Uh, I mean paired uh, stimulus. So if we go through the formal definition definitions of the theory and then looking into few of the definitions that are available to us to understand the concept of classical conditioning and to see the implementation of classical conditioning in our organization. So it will help us to uh, clearly understand what basically is classical conditioning and how it is related to work based and work based learning. Uh, learning uh, Continue, uh, sorry, this is about learning a conditioned response involves building up an association between the unconditioned stimuli and the conditioned stimuli. Unconditioned stimuli was a real one, natural one, whereas conditioned stimuli was a artificial one. When unconditioned and conditioned stimuli are paired, the conditioned stimuli takes on the properties of the unconditioned stimuli. Jab natural or artificial stimulus ko aapas mein relate karke show kiya jata hai, use kiya jata hai, to over a period of time, jo artificial stimuli hai, that takes the place of uh, uh, the natural one, real one, fine and generates a conditioned response. And definitely when uh, artificial stimulus aapko dikha ke aapse ek response aapse liya jata hai, so that is known as conditioned response. Here is the model. Uh, I mean, this is another illustration of uh, or the pictorial 
form of uh, explaining whatever we have discussed uh, right now. That is, first one was basically the unconditioned stimuli which, wa uh, which was basically ne uh, meat that was shown to a dog. And in response, they got a real, uh, I mean, uh, Pavlov got a real response in terms of salvation. When bell was shown uh, separately or bell was rang separately, so there was no response to, uh, there was no response to um, the bell. But as soon as both the things were paired and shown to a dog uh, and uh, co on continuous basis, so uh, dog ne learn kiya ke now how should I respond to these two things, pairing of the things, and again he was behaving in a natural manner. Or aista aista Pavlov ne meat ko hata diya, sirf bell rang ki. To bell ke ringing pe jab uh, dog ne salivate karna shuru kar diya. So kya hua? He said that ke artificial ke against jab natural response hum lete hain, so that response is known as conditioned response. So students, what do you feel? What do you think that um, can this theory be applicable to work situations? Can this theory be applicable to the learning scenarios of the uh, students, learning scenarios of the employees? Yes, this is. Okay, let's. Uh, develop a scenario and scenarios about KG uh, jab kabhi bhi head office se aapke SBU mein aapke outlet mein aapke branch mein visit aata hai jab bhi koi delegation aata hai and uh, that delegation is interested in looking at the progress of your uh, outlet of your branch to kya hai aapke branch mein Cleaning shuru ho jati hai. Cleaning of window panes, cleaning of all the records, all the files, tables are maintained, people are supposed to put on good dress to look good and so on. Ek dawa visit aya hai office se aur logo ne daftaron ki safai shuru kar di. Ek banda tha wahan pe Mr. X who was supposed to be a new manager over there and um, he was a silent observer. He was looking at the things, he was looking at the preparations that people were doing, he was looking at the behavior or the dress that the people were, uh, I mean, dressed up with. So, kya hua ek dawa visit aya head office ka, to head office se jo bhi delegation tha, uska visit hua pehli dawa, to people used to behave in a certain manner. Ye behavior unho ne adopt kiya. तो उस बंदे ने ऑब्जर्व किया दूसरी दफा भी ऐसा हुआ जब विजिट आना था तो लोगों ने क्लीनिंग वगैरह की और अच्छे ड्रेस में ड्रेस अप होकर आ गए तीसरी दफा भी ऐसा हुआ कुछ साल में चार दफा ऐसा हुआ पांचवी दफा मिस्टर एक्स जो कि मैनेजर था जिसने कि नई इस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को नया ज्वाइन किया था वो जब uh, gates enter hua to there were few people who were cleaning the window panes and who were involved in making the things neat. So he developed an idea. He thought that okay it is possible that today again we are going to have a visit from head office. So he went to his office and put on the good dress that he was having hanging in his office. So this was a simple example. This was a very uh, raw example with respect to, I mean, understanding of the thing, but it helps us really, I mean, this classical conditioning theory really actually, um, I mean, is being practiced like this. There is another example in front of us that um, all the employees, the maximum of the employees who are working in certain organization, whenever, I mean, they are used to get pay on first of each month, fine. So whenever there is uh, first of each month coming uh, near, they become happy and they used to invest more or they used to spend more rather. Okay, gee, so uh, whenever there is first of every month, people become heavy, uh, happy and they uh, spend more and more, fine. So over a period of time, they have learned that whenever there is first of each month, we are going to have, uh, we are going to have salary. So, based on that salary expectations, uh, they spend more. Who are you? Kuch, ye bhi to possibilities hai. Jaise hamare haan flood aya hua hai, jaise hamare haan aur 
ڈیفرنٹ قسم کے کرائیسز آ جاتے ہیں پچھلے کچھ سالوں میں ہمارے ہاں آرتھ کو ایک آیا تھا اس کی وجہ سے کچھ ایسا ہوا کہ آرگنائزیشن فنڈز کو مینیج نہ کر پائی اور فائنینشل ریسورسز کو اس طرح سے مینیج نہ کر سکی تو کیا ہوا کہ فرسٹ آف منتھ تو آ گئی یا قریب آ گئی اور لوگ ہو ور ہیونگ ایکسپیکٹیشنس فرام فرسٹ آف منتھ بیکیم ہیپی بٹ پے نہ مل سکی ان ٹائم سو کہنے کا مطلب یہ کہ دے ہیو پیئرڈ فرسٹ آف ایچ منتھ ود دا مور اسپینڈنگس ود بیکمنگ ہیپی دیٹ دے آر ہیپی دیٹ دے آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹیک دا دیئر سیلری فرام دیئر آفیسز آن فرسٹ آف ایچ منتھ سو اسٹوڈنٹس یہ ایک کچھ چیزیں تھیں کلاسیکل کنڈیشننگ کے حوالے سے جس طرح سے ہم لوگوں نے کہا کہ بیسڈ آن سم اسٹیومولس وی جنرلی رسپونڈ ٹو دا اور وی اڈاپٹ سرٹن سرٹن ٹائپ آف بہیویئر سو اسٹوڈنٹس ناؤ لوکنگ ایٹ این ادر تھیوری وچ از اباؤٹ آپرینٹ کنڈیشننگ تھیوری یا آپرینٹ کنڈیشننگ اینڈ آپرینٹ کنڈیشننگ تھیوری از پریزنٹیڈ بائی اسکینر and Skinner is of the view that generally people behave keeping in view the consequences of their behavior. Consequences of behavior se kya murad hai? Consequences of behavior se murad hai ke aaj aap mehnat karenge to aap achha grade lenge. So keeping in view achha grade, you work hard. Keeping in view the promotion, you work hard. Keeping in view the Uh, acquisition of some job in some organization you uh, become regular in studies you become you pay more time you pay more time in clarification of the concepts that you have you try to learn the procedures that are used in um, the workplaces and so on so forth so uh, getting into the details of this uh, operant conditioning theory will enable us to understand the theory in detail So it says that uh, operation, uh, operant conditioning is about uh, learning that takes place when the learner recognizes the connection between a behavior and its consequences. This is very simple definition of uh, operant conditioning that we generally adopt those behaviors that result in positive consequences and we try to avoid those behaviors which result in negative consequences جن کا result اچھا ہوتا ہے جو ہم result چاہتے ہیں جو ہمیں اچھا لگتا ہے وہ ہم بار بار perform کرنے کی کوشش کرتے ہیں جس کا consequence negative ہوتا ہے برا ہوتا ہے harsh ہوتا ہے bitter ہوتا ہے ہم کوشش کرتے ہیں کہ ایسا behavior adopt ہی نہ کریں جس کا consequence برا ہے so moving ahead law of effect law of effect کیا چیز ہے students Similarly, simp uh, simply it is related to the consequences, I mean the action that you take and in consequence and result what you get. So it says that ke wo behaviors in ka consequence in ka result positive hota hai that are likely to be repeated more and more again and again. Whereas wo behaviors in ka consequence achha nahi hota, bitter hota hai, negative hota hai, those behaviors are generally um, Avoided by the people. Fine. ایسا ہی ہوتا ہے ہم لوگ بھی ایسا ہی کرتے ہیں ہم لوگ ریوارڈ تو لینا چاہتے ہیں فار گیٹنگ دیٹ ریوارڈ وی ٹرائی وی ورک ہارڈ وی ریمین پنکچوئل فار ایکوائرنگ گڈ گریڈس وی اسٹڈی فار لانگر آرٹس وی پٹ ان آر فل ایفرٹس بیسٹ ایفرٹس ٹو گیٹ دا گڈ گریڈس اپنے باس کو خوش دیکھنے کے لیے we try to be punctual when we come to work and we um, perform up to our best level of performance. Whereas on the other hand, if we look at the negative consequences, what can be the consequences of the negative consequences? It can be that if you are late in an organization, if you are late, then the result will be that the boss will be angry. Boss may punish you. Boss may ask you to work for additional few hours. Boss may ask you to cut. I mean, boss may cut down the cut the salary from from your salary. I mean, cut a piece of salary from your salary, portion of salary. Fine. So, कहने का मतलब ये कि जब आपको पता है कि consequence is going to be wrong, consequence is going to be bitter, so you don't adopt that type of behavior.
So law of effect states that we try to, we are generally encouraged to have positive uh, consequences and we try to avoid the behaviors or the actions that result in negative consequences. Okay, the two terms that are generally used with respect to operant conditioning are reinforcers and punishers. जब कभी भी हम students motivation की बात करते हैं, जब कभी भी हम students बात करते हैं positive move की, जब कभी भी हम positive consequence की बात करते हैं, तो ये एक ऐसे set of factors हैं enforcers की, reinforcers की हम बात कर रहे हैं. Reinforcers are the set of factors that pushes us in a positive direction. These are the factors that encourages us to adopt a positive behavior, which have definitely the positive consequences. In simple words, we may say that reinforcers are basically the motivators. On the other hand, punishers are the factors that stops us to adopt certain negative behavior. So, undesired behavior ko kam karne ke liye jo tactics, jo factors generally organizations mein, generally humare gharon mein, generally uh, use kiye jate hai, those are known as punishers. Badi asaan si example hai, agar aap achha perform karoge, to you will get rewarded. So, ye jo reward aapko mila, this is, this proves to be an uh, this proves to be a reinforcer. Ye aapko bar bar push karega, reinforce karega ki aap dobara achha behavior perform karo. Organization mein punctual raho. Duty hours ko full, uh, fully uh, perform karo. Uh, you should be committed to the work that you are uh, supposed to do. And um, you should be uh, looking, um, I mean very, active and effective in your organizations to get rewards. Ek aur cheez hai ki aap agar apna tenure plus jo aapka required level of performance hai wo show karoge to you will be given motive, uh, promotion. So promotion over here will work as or act as reinforcer. So it is reinforcement um, that you perform well, you try to work hard, you contribute fully towards the achievement of the organizational goals to get that uh, promotion again and again. So this is, these can be few of the examples of positive motivation or positive reinforcement or we say that reinforcement in simple. On the other hand, punishment is to stop some negative behavior. Suppose, aapne kahi park ghalat kar di, ek sadak pe aap ja rahe the, motorway pe suppose aap safar kar rahe the, और मोटरवे पे सफर करते हुए आपने कोई गलती की गलती इन टर्म्स ऑफ ट्रैफिक रूल्स गलती इन टर्म्स ऑफ पार्किंग एट अ रॉन्ग प्लेस व्हिच यू वर नॉट सपोज्ड टू डू एग्जैक्टली उसके अगेंस्ट आपको पनिशमेंट मिली पनिशमेंट वाज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ फाइन यू वर सपोज्ड टू गिव फाइन पे फाइन for maybe 700 rupees or for maybe 1000 rupees, okay, this can be an example of punishment. Punishment is something that is added to your behavior to stop the negative things. So, for the time being students, we may uh, say that, I mean these two set of um, uh, factors that are the reinforcers as well as the punishers are used in operant conditioning to um, control the behavior of uh, individuals in the workplace. Um, these reinforcers as well as punishers can be used anywhere, everywhere in the organizations, in the universities, in the homes, in the general behavior of individuals. Because whenever we are aware of the consequences, we try to adopt the behavior accordingly. Okay, ji, aap loon ko ghar mein experience hua hoga, jab kabhi bhi koi bacha, koi baby غلط حرکت کرتا ہے which is not basically the desired behavior in that particular premises in that particular home تو I mean ڈانٹ ڈپٹ پڑی آتی ہے parents سے اور at times وہ intensity پہ depend کرتا ہے کہ at times مار بھی پڑی آتی ہے so slapping a child or مار کا پڑنا is basically a form of punishment this is being added to your behavior or your good self due to 
for 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 uh, uh, minimizing or decreasing the behavior that you are showing so students for this lecture we have learned two things two concepts one was about classical conditioning and in classical conditioning we have learned that um, uh, whenever stimulus uh, stimulus acts upon you you in return adopt certain behavior that is uh, a response to that stimulus and operant conditioning states that whenever you uh, have the idea about the consequences so you uh, behave accordingly and generally to have positive consequences you try to behave in a positive manner and to avoid uh, the negative consequences you try to avoid such behavior which leads to that uh, those uh, negative consequences so uh, students uh, thank you very much for now for this lecture and we'll see you in the upcoming lecture thank you